What's up everyone? My name is Sir Mark and I'm welcoming you all to the first part of our video series here in your subject titled Analysis of Urine and Body Fluids. Now for the first part, we're going to talk about urinalysis, the major bulk of your subject. Before we go deeper into the subject of urinalysis from the different components of urinalysis from physical, chemical, and microscopic, it is only fitting that we introduce you the necessary materials to use for your analysis. So are you ready? Let's get it! Hello everyone, I'm Sir Dwayne and this time we will now proceed to introducing all the materials needed for complete urinalysis. But before that, we need to have our PPE. And we need to make sure that we have our own watches for timing uh, the chemical part of urinalysis. And for girls, we need to make sure as well that, you, that your hair is properly tied. So let's start first with our container. So for our container, it should be clean, dry, flat bottom, um, wide mouth, with tight fitting lid, and it should be transparent. So next is our marker for labeling. Next is our retinamel test tube. Our test tube rack. Plain background for color, printed material for transparency, our labeler, our chemical strip, our chemical analysis, our clean tissue, parafilm to cover our test tube, pasture pipette, our slides and cover slip. And here is our microscope, lastly our centrifuge. Okay, additional reminder, before giving our uh, container to the patient, we should always label the container. It should have the patient's name, birth date of the patient, date and time of collection, and the gender of the patient. The label should be put in the body and not in the cover of the container. Hey guys, what's up? So now we'll proceed with the urinalysis. So urinalysis is composed of three um, parts. We have the physical, the chemical, and the microscopic part. So um, we'll first tackle physical examination of urine. But before that, of course, let us disinfect our station or our workplace. So now we have disinfected our workplace. So here we have our urine sample and our label test tube. Quick reminder guys, if your specimen is refrigerated, kindly make sure that it is in room temperature before testing. Make sure the urine submitted is about 30 to 50 ml, but we only test about 15 ml of the total specimen. Before transferring it, we have to gently swirl our sample, fill the test tube at three-fourths full. And then gently wipe off the excess. So we now have to determine the color of the urine. Put your tube against a white background and then determine its color. Normal color of urine ranges from straw to amber. Any color outside of the range is considered abnormal. So let's determine this color. So what do you think guys? Correct, it's light yellow. Next we'll determine its transparency or clarity. To do that, Hold the test tube at the bottom part and then slightly agitate it to know whether there are particulates floating. If there are none, report it as clear. If there are, kindly get um, a printed material and hold it against it and determine Go. So for this urine, its transparency is... Correct! It's clear! 
So that concludes the first part of your analysis, which is the physical examination. That's good, guys. So I will now hand you over to Sir Dwayne for the chemical part. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. This is Sir Dwayne again. And this time, uh, let's now proceed to the second part of our review analysis, which is the chemical examination. <laughs> The materials that we'll be needing are the following. Our sample, the chemical strip, and our tissue. Before anything else, we should take note that our chemical strips are very sensitive. So we should not take one unless it is already to be used. I'll be performing everything and you should um, watch it closely. So to begin, once the chemical strip has been removed from the bottle, it should be dipped quickly into the sample and then rim it on the side. After rimming, immediately blot dry the chemical strip on the dry tissue. Okay, so once our chemical strip has been blot dry, we should take note, the timing is very important in grading our chemical parameters. Um, each parameter has its own reaction time. So, for glucose, it is 30 seconds up until the very last to react, which is our leukocyte esterase, which is 120 seconds or 2 minutes. So we will start grading or comparing our chemical strip to the chart after 2 minutes. We should take note that when we are holding our reagent strip, it should be horizontal and not vertical to avoid runover phenomena. And also, let us take note that our reagent strip should not be in contact with the bottle to avoid discoloration and contamination. So once you are done comparing your agent strip to the bottle or to the chart, rather, you should, be dis you should dispose the agent strip in a bottle with disinfectant. Okay, additional reminder, how to know if our agent strip is still okay to be used. So we should always take a look at the last two parameters and it should have a white color or any shade of white color. Any color change in the last two parameters means that our agent strip has already expired and it's not okay to be used. Okay? You can take note that the last two parameters, any color change of them means that our agent strip are not okay to be used. Alright, so for the first part of the microscopic examination is, of course, we have to centrifuge our specimen. Now, I'm sure you have experienced centrifugation already and a very, um, the, the common, uh, the rule of thumb, rather, in centrifugation is that it should be balanced. Alright, so in this case, what we're going to use as a balancer is just tap water, okay? Alright, now that you have prepared your balancer, the next step that we do is we have to cover the tubes with your parafilm. Alright. So I'm gonna first put this in the wrap. And for the parafilm, so as you can see, it has um, it has their own, like an outer um, covering. So what you do is just tear, and as you can see, right? You remove this paper, all right? And this is your parafilm. And what you do is to cover, hold the end, and you stretch, all right? Okay, and you uh, pinch the outer edges to secure, uh, uh, to become a lock, all right? Okay, we'll do the same with the other one. All right, now that the tubes have been covered by parafilm, the next step that we should do is to centrifuge this using, of course, a centrifuge. <laughs> okay, so here is our centrifuge, our, um, one of our best friends also in the lab. So what we're gonna do is, again, we should balance it. All right, should, should have opposite ends, all right? Okay. Secure, make sure that it's locked, and turn the centrifuge on. Let the tubes be centrifuged at a speed of 1500 to 2000 RPM for five minutes. Okay, so after five minutes, the centrifuge has stopped, and it's now time to get our tubes once again. Alright, so open, get the tubes, alright, your balancer, and of course, your specimen. Alright. Now the next step is we have to remove the parafilm that's covering the tube, okay? So again, remove, all right? And the next procedure is what we call as the bottoms-up technique. 
um, is quite different from the bottoms up that you know. <laughs> but in your analysis of your renal body fluids laboratory, bottoms up is just a procedure to um, decant the supernatant and hence remaining or leaving the sediment to be examined under the microscope. Alright, so what we do is um, we open the container of your urine specimen and bottoms up. So don't be afraid to bottoms up, okay? So what you do is just you and so that's the bottoms up. And the remaining uh, volume should be about 0.5 to 1 ml. And this would suffice already for your microscopic examination. All right. All right, so next, okay, again, with your um, remaining volume, try to agitate slowly to uh, resuspend the sediment, okay? After using your pasture my pet, okay, get an amount, all right, and drop um, at the center in your already labeled slide, okay? All right. After, you get one cover slip, one cover slip, and careful not to create any bubbles, and this is now ready for examination under the microscope. Alright, okay, so since we have already created our smear to be examined under the microscope, of course the next procedure is to examine it under the microscope. Alright. So make sure your microscope is already been plugged. Alright. Turn on your light source. And we'll start first, of course, with the low power objective. Now under the low power objective, the sediments that we have to look for are your casts, your squamous epithelial cells, your amorphous materials, and mucous threads. Now we start by scanning at least 10 low power fields and then each field will count how many casts are there, how many epithelial cells, mucous threads, and amorphous materials. Now after scanning for 10 fields, we'll do an average and that will be our final report, okay? Now for the rest or the remaining of your sediments, they are to be examined under the high power objective, all right? We will not use the oil immersion objective, only up to the high power objective. Now, what is very much essential in microscopic examination of urine is that you will identify or you can identify the sediment that is seen or that can be seen under the microscope. Another important reminder is that if you are doubtful if you're in the correct viewing field, you must look for an epithelial cell, a squamous epithelial cell, because usually these cells are really large to be seen um, under the LPO. And once you've seen already a squamous epithelial cell, then you are confident that you are in the correct viewing field. 